This video introduces the concept of controllability. The first video looked at definitions of stability, which is the inherent boundedness or convergence properties of a system response with a bounded input. However, in general, we're interested not just in convergence, but we also want the asymptotic value of the state or the output to be the one that we really want. And controllability links precisely to this. Are we able to achieve the desired asymptotic state? Sometimes controllability may be referred to as reachability, so you should know that. A system is controllable if it's possible to determine an appropriate input signal for any initial state which will achieve a specified final state at a specified time. So we'll use a picture to illustrate what we mean by this sentence. You are starting from an arbitrary initial point. There it is, x of 0. You want to get to a specified endpoint, and there it is, xtn. So you've got some thinking to do. And what you're going to think about is, what can I choose the input signal u of t to be so that I go from x of 0 to xt end? And that's what controllability is about. If you can always choose or find a u of t to achieve xt end for any x0, then you're controllable. So remark, a system given in control canonical form is always fully controllable. And we'll revisit this later. Concepts of range then. So this is some background material. If you have a vector x of dimension n, and you make up this vector as a linear combination of n other vectors, which I'll call them wi. So here we go. You can see x is made up of alpha 1 w1 all the way up to alpha n wn. The question you need to ask, does there exist choices of alpha i such that x can be any value i like in an n-dimensional space? Well, the answer to this is yes, if and only if the matrix W is full rank, where the matrix W is defined from these corresponding vectors W1 to Wn. And assuming W is full rank, and we'll make it square for convenience, then you can always solve for the alphas using a formula a bit like this. Now that's important, because we're going to come back to this in a minute. Controllability. A system is controllable if it's possible to determine an appropriate input signal which will achieve a specified final state. Now, if x of t can be represented as a linear combination of vectors which cover the whole range, and we've defined w to be these vectors w1, w2 to wn, and we've assumed that w is full rank, then controllability reduces to checking the rank of matrix W. So the key point is, if x of t takes this form, then I'm controllable if W is full rank. That's the key point. So if you can express x of t as a linear combination of vectors, wi, then as long as those linear combination of vectors gives you a full rank matrix, then you can be controllable. But obviously, there is a minor other assumption in there. It assumes that we can choose these alpha i however we want to. Let's look then back at eigenvalue eigenvector decompositions, which were covered in the previous series. This decomposition is useful for identifying whether there are regions in the state space which cannot be reached from an arbitrary start point. Now, we're going to use an initial condition of 0. Because it's a linear system, the initial condition actually doesn't matter. You'll remember from the previous series that we derived the forced response of a state space model using an expression like this, which is the convolution integral. Now, if we decompose this using an eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition, you'll notice we end up with a sum over all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And then we've got wi for the eigenvectors, vi transpose for the left eigenvectors, and e to the lambda i t minus tau, which has got the eigenvalues in it. So that's how we express the response of our system. 
Now, as before, we're going to assume that W is a matrix made up of all of these eigenvectors. And so therefore, assuming distinct eigenvalues, we know that W is full rank by definition. Now, it's clear that X of T has the structure that we want, and you'll see why that is. So first of all, here's X of T, and you'll notice what I've done is I've taken the WI outside of the integral, because it's not affected by integral, not being a function of time, and put it next to this sum. And the reason for doing that is I can now write this sum like this. I've got x of t equals the sum over i of wi alpha i, where the terms alpha i are given by these integrals. So now I've got x of t in the form that I want. So as long as I can choose these alpha i's as I please, then I can always make x of t any value that I like. So it's clear that to choose x of t arbitrarily, we need to satisfy two conditions. First of all, alpha i has got to be not equal to zero, and we've got to be able to specify it however we want, and we need to know that w is full rank, but we're assuming that from the eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition. So we require that alpha i can be chosen freely. Well, this is the definition of alpha i. Now, remember, u of t, or here u of tor, is actually your degree of freedom. So the bottom line is, you can choose this u of tor however you want, and therefore, in principle, you can get alpha i to be whatever you want it to be. But there is one exception. We have to assume that beta i is non-zero. You'll see there's a beta i term here. If that's zero, then alpha i is always zero. So as long as beta i is not zero, we can choose alpha i however we want. If beta i is zero, then we will have no contribution along the eigenvector direction w i. And so if you specify an end state which has part of w i in it, you will not be able to reach it, and so you will not be fully controllable. So a system is fully controllable if and only if the VB matrix has no zero rows. So the VB matrix, which has got rows beta 1, beta 2, down to beta n, all those rows must be non-zero. If any beta i is zero, then the forced mode has no contribution along the corresponding eigenvector direction, and so you have no controllability along that direction. So if beta i is not equal to naught, then there will always exist a choice of u of t to define the alpha as you please, in other words, to get the required contribution along the corresponding direction. So some examples then to demonstrate how we might do this. Here's the first example, and the question is simple. Is the following system controllable? Now we've used an eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition, so the first thing you need to do is find the eigenvalues. So there we go. If I solve the determinant of lambda i minus a equals zero, then I find that the eigenvalues are at 2 and minus 1. From that, I can find the eigenvectors. So the eigenvector associated with 2 is solved by an expression of this form, a minus 2i times w1 um, equals 0. And we solve that, and you find that w1 equals 2, 1. And similarly, I can find the second eigenvector. There it is. Having got the eigenvectors, so there's my matrix of eigenvectors. I can get the left eigenvectors by inverting this matrix. And there we go. There's my left eigenvector matrix. And the final step, then, is to calculate VB. So I do V times B, and this is my answer. And what do you notice? Clearly, all the rows are non-zero, so this system is controllable. Example 2, slightly bigger, I've now got a 3 by 3 A matrix. But we've got to do the same step. First do the eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition. So I solve for the eigenvalues by doing the determinant of lambda i minus a equals 0. And here I find the eigenvalues, a bit messier, 4.24 minus 0.24 and 0. And then, one at a time, solve for each of the eigenvectors. Now I've solved the first one here for you, and then what I'm going to say is, clearly, these are not easy paper and pen computations. And so if it's starting to get this messy, you might be saying, 
Is there a shortcut? So I'm going to suggest we use MATLAB. So here we go. What we're interested in is calculating this term here, the left eigenvectors times the B matrix. So you'll see the MATLAB code. I've used the eig command to find the W matrix. I've used inv to find V. And then I've just done V times B. And what do you notice? It's all the values are non-zero. So this system is fully controllable. Third example, again, a three by three. And here we're going to go straight to MATLAB because we're recognizing that the computations are rather tedious on pen and paper. So here's the MATLAB code. And what do you notice in this particular case? The first row of VB is zero. So this system is not fully controllable. If you wanted to get to a position which included a component along the first eigenvector, you could not do it. So a summary. We've used eigenvalue vector decompositions to introduce concepts of controllability or reachability, which means the ability to reach any desired value of x of t by a judicious choice of u of t. And we've shown that full controllability, so can we get to any x of t we desire, requires the matrix VB to have no zero rows, where B is the matrix of left eigenvectors. We've deliberately not discussed non-simple Jordan forms, systems with repeated eigenvalues, because it just gets messy without really adding much insight.